What's up, YouTube? How y'all doing today? Hope y'all having a good day today. So, for today's topic, I'm doing something new that I've never done before in my entire life. I am going to be conducting a little experiment, if you will, for research purposes. So, <clears throat> the experiment is dealing with SARMs which SARMs stands for Selective Androgen Receptive Modulators. Now, there are many different SARMs that you can purchase for experimentation, research purposes only. Um, SARMs are not approved for human consumption. So, I will not be using SARMs on myself. I will be using SARMs on um, my lab rats that I have. I'm conducting experiments on lab rats. So, because again, SARMs are not approved and are not technically legal to use on people, per se. Or the average Joe cannot use them on themselves, per se. Um, they have done several experiments on people. Uh, particularly a SARM called Austrian, um, which is not a super powerful SARM. It's a, a great SARM to start off for beginners if you were to use these illegally, per se. But there's a lot of gray area when it comes to the laws regarding this stuff. So it's not legal, but it's not illegal. It's one of those type of situations. But um, they've done several experiments in the late 90s um, for patients who have, you know, um, osteoporosis, cancer patients dealing with muscle wasting, um, older individuals who have sarcopenia, which is a muscle wasting condition, in which it's not it's not the same as atrophy. Atrophy is where, let's say, if I were to quit doing bench press, my my pectoral muscles will atrophy because I'm not using them as 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 um, as much as I was when I was bench pressing, so they'll, they'll get smaller, <clears throat> but they won't really waste away. Sacropenia is muscle wasting, and um, so they use this SARM called Austrian, um, which again stands for Selective Androgen Receptor Modulator, and patients showed improvement in um, retaining muscle and gaining muscle they showed improvement in um, connective tissues such as tendons and ligaments which connective tissues got stronger and improvement in bone mass and bone density so that's with patients who had cancer osteoporosis or sarcopenia or age related um, ailments if you will and now there's several several SARMs on the market today and um, the experiments that I'll be conducting on my lab rats. I have names for my lab rats. I've named them after um, muscles. You know, I have my lab rat um, pecs, uh, biceps, triceps, quadriceps, hamstrings, abdominals, terius minor, terius major. Yeah, th those are my lab rats. That's their names. If you, uh, you know, see where I'm going with this. So, again, um, I'll be conducting these experiments for the next, I'm going to be doing what is called a SARMs stack on my lab rats. I'll be using three SARMs, RAD140, Austrian, and MK677. Um, so, they'll, I'll be doing an eight-week cycle on the lab rats to see what sort of growth will happen to the said lab rats and before you even ask no you cannot see my lab rats you can't see them this is kind of top secret if you will um, on my lab rats and um, yeah so rad 140 has they've done some uh, human trials with uh, rad 140 and it was human and trials on other lab rats and it has been shown to increase um, testosterone um, it's really great for that it almost mimics uh, the steroid anavarin I probably butchered that 
um, which is a mild steroid, anabolic steroid, and it mimics that. Now, again, these are receptive modulators. They're not adding hormones per se. They merely encourage hormones and growth production in the body itself. So, um, RAD140 in rats and humans encourages um, testosterone production. So we're going to see what that does. And then, I'm also putting in Austrian, which as we said before, is great for, you know, can, it's, it's kind of like almost a, in layman's terms, it's almost like a good general SARM. And for those who do SARMs illegally, not me, who do SARMs illegally, it's a great starter. They, they almost recommend this every time for um, beginners, newbies, you know. Austrian. And there's also another SARM that I was considering. Um, I do believe it's called ACP105, which is a weaker form of Austrian. But I figure, you know, if I'm going to be doing all this, this experimentation on lab rats, I might as well go all the way with it, right? Excuse me, once I'm going to get something to drink. My throat's getting a little dry. Uh. So, talks about RAD140 increases testosterone. Austrian, like we said, it increases, you know, healing, um, increases bone mass, muscle, connective tissues. And then, uh, my most, uh, not my most, um, what's the word am I looking for? My most hopeful SARM is MK677. Now, MK677, again, uh, it's not adding hormones, but it in humans it is shown to increase human growth hormone production, which is great for everything. I mean, it's great for improving sleep. It's great for um, healing, and also, of course, it's great for adding muscle mass and and healing connective tissue injuries and things of this nature. A, a lot of people have experimented technically illegally on themselves with MK677 for healing properties. Because again, it increases human growth hormone in people and it increases growth hormone in the lab rats, which you know I hope will happen to my lab rats. So, <clears throat> orange, peach, and mango. Pretty good. So, I'll be conducting this experimentation on the lab rats and what I'm going to try and do is I am going to be showing before and after photos, or not photos, excuse me, video of myself. And what I will be doing is I'm going to increase my workouts to see if I can keep up with my lab rats, so to speak. And maybe with the increase in my workouts and, um, you know, my sorry, this is a random hair. Um, if I increase my workouts and uh, my protein intake, my mac, my micro and macronutrients, I'll be able to match the gains, so to speak, of my lab rats. If you uh, see where I'm going with this, you know what I mean. So again, you know, this isn't legal or illegal. It's uh, it's a research. Uh, chemical slash drug or if you will and it's not like steroids I mean it is but it isn't steroids you're adding hormones to your body SARMs you're merely encouraging the body the body of lab rats or if you are doing SARMs um, on yourself you're encouraging your own body to produce certain hormones um, to get a certain desirable results when it comes to the gym and things of this nature. So, um, that will be my experiment to see if I can uh, keep up with my lab rats and be working out. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Now, side effects. Side effects include what will happen is in human trials, they noticed. You know, what you're doing is you're kind of putting the body into overdrive. 
and it causes your hormone levels to spike, whether it be testosterone or human growth hormone and things of this are insulin um, um, sensitivity levels. Um, can't remember if it's insulin sensitivity resistance. Forgive me on that one, on that misnomer. But all this stuff is great for, you know, working out and, you know, bodybuilding or powerlifting, so to speak. So, and there's a, you have a lot less chances of having um, long-term effects um, as you would with steroid use. People who use steroids, you know, especially if you use cycle after cycle after cycle, even if you're doing it properly, you could still have issues later on in life with your own personal um, testosterone production and, and increased risk for cancer, particularly with human growth hormone. Um, you really, because the problem with human growth hormone is it makes everything grow. So, again, for people who, who use SARMs, uh, MK677 to increase their body's ability to produce human growth hormone. If you are, if you have potentially, uh, potentially, excuse me, if you have cancerous cells, everybody technically has cancerous cells, but if you have cancerous cells that are active and you have a tumor that you do not know or are not aware of and you take MK677, uh, you're going to be feeding that tumor. So, and I'm taking other supp uh, supplements for myself, and then I'm also giving my, my uh, lab rats other supplements, particularly casein protein, which is an, an awesome protein. Both me and the lab rats will be taking the casein protein, and uh, the casein protein is a great protein. It has um, it lasts in your body for seven to eight hours, so it has a very high bioavailability. Now, what that means is is if you take in 60 grams of casein protein, seven to eight hours it takes for that body to fully process all that protein. So what it does is it slowly releases that 60 grams. You divide it by, let's say it lasts in your body for eight hours. You divide it by eight hours, it will slowly release a little bit of protein for eight hours. So it's why it's great to take in the evening time before bed. I actually just made myself a casein protein um, before bed and then um, this morning, I gave my lab rats the SARMs, Austrian uh, MK677 and RAD140. So, with all this, you know, my lab rats are in a great mode for developing size, you know. I got little treadmills and, and all kinds of stuff for the, the lab rats to, uh, you know, grow. <laughs> so, anyways, um, with this said and done, um, this creates a perfect environment for growing muscle mass, um, but also could create a perfect environment to grow cancerous cells. So that's why uh, HGH arguably is one of the more riskier compounds to take, whether it's a compound you're taking that naturally increases your body's ability to produce HGH, or if it's a synthetic compound where you're taking HGH straight up, just adding it to your current uh, HGH levels. So. <clears throat> but yeah so that's the experiment I'm going to be doing typically the way you're supposed to do it properly is an 8 week cycle of SARMs and then a 4 week uh, PCT post cycle treatment to uh, get uh, the lab rats hormonal levels back to normal because what's going to happen is as hormone levels are going to spike they're going to peak at about the 4 to 5 week mark and then slowly be coming back down. So that's why it's only advisable to do these SARMs on your lab rats for about eight week cycles. So, and I know what you're thinking that, oh, what if you're overdosing the poor lab rats? Um, not really because again, I'm taking three, or well, I'm not taking, the lab rats are taking three different uh, SARMs and I'm taking uh, three different supplements for myself, casein protein, um, ca a calcium supplement, and a creatine supplement. So, sorry for the mix-up on who's taking what, but for the lab rats, the, when they're taking these SARMs, they're, they're targeting different receptive modulators. Or, I'm gonna say the whole thing. They're targeting different selective androgen receptive modulators, or different androgens. Um, 
butchering that a little. I threw myself off by taking, by talking about who's <laughs> taking what. <laughs> but you, you get you get the point. That it, they're different uh, modulators that the songs are, are, are targeting in the lab rats, you know. So, and you can't really, I mean, there's some evidence to suggest you could over flood if you're like, Let's say I give the I'm giving the lab rats 15 uh, milligrams of uh, Austrian, about 20 milligrams of the Rad 140, and then uh, 15 of MK677. You know, there's there's people who've given their lab rats stronger doses dosages than that. So I've done my fair bit of uh, research for the uh, lab rats. Said so the lab rats will be in good health, but with, with anything, there's always risks associated with it. I mean, every time you take a Tylenol, you're you're risking, you know, having some sort of illness induced by the Tylenol. Believe it or not, you should look at statistics on that. Now, moving on. So, after the eight-week cycle is complete, there will be a post-cycle treatment. Um to get the uh, hormone levels of the lab rats back up to par to where they were before. Um, because if you go any longer than eight weeks, you're really just kind of, you're really overloading the endocrine system of the lab rats. Um, and you're, you're just, they're just going to be tired and they're not going to be able to move around the maze to cook the piece of cheese, if you will, or run on their mini treadmills. Um, so it's really only necessary to do it for eight weeks. Whereas, you know, if I was giving my lab rats steroids, uh, that could keep going and going because I'm adding hormones to them. But you're just going to have a much bigger PCT excuse me, cycle once you're done. And there's all kinds of other slew of problems if you overuse and abuse steroids. But that's not what we're doing here. We're doing SARMs experiments on the lab rats. So... Again, Rad 140, MK677, and Austrian. We're doing a stack. Because so I figured, what the hell, why not, you know, go big if I'm doing this sort of experiment on the lab rats. So, I'm going to be posting another video of myself where I'm trying to match the lab rats. Um, I'll be posting a video of myself, the before, and then... Because I've already started this experimentation on the lab rats. So technically it's day uh, five or six. I can't really remember. Day five of the um, the experimentation. So, And again, you, you, the lab rats are not going to be seeing any, re, any results or anything popping up until about ten days to two weeks, give or take, depending on the lab rats themselves, genetic makeup, so on and so forth. Um... You know, there are some noticeable um, um, effects already. You know, very minor for right now, and they'll pick up until about week four. Maybe even week five will be the peak. But typically week four is the peak of the uh, the SARM cycle. And, you know, the, the lab rep seems to have a little bit more... Um, not The strength hasn't come yet, but they do seem to have a little bit more uh, muscular endurance. So they can do more workouts. It's not crazy. Maybe another extra workout when it's their gym time on the treadmill. Uh, maybe another extra workout, an extra set, so to speak. Um, but these will increase as time goes on. And yeah, so I think this is a pretty good uh, SARM cycle for increasing size of the lab rats. And we'll see how it goes. And I'll be posting my, me trying to keep up with the lab rats before and after. Um, yeah, so continue. And I'll also be posting some um, videos here and there throughout the experiment to see how things are going and, and to see um, what possible side effects are popping up. If any, I'm sure there will be side effects towards the end of this uh, experimentation, the, towards the end of the eight-week cycle. And um, that's where the PCT will come in to help get the lab rats back up to, to par again. But, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes from here. But um, I appreciate you watching. And if you watch the whole video, um, little test, because I like to do these little tests. 
Uh, ask me where I got my camo hat. All right? All right. Peace.